Hello and welcome to another episode of Cal's Questions in association with Ampersand Productions. As always, I'm joined uh, by Paul, uh, the owner of Ampersand Productions, <laughs> and I'm Cal, and I uh, we're bringing on all the best people in the TTRPG community and uh, picking their brains, getting to know them a bit better, spending a bit of time, um, yeah, with them and seeing how we go. And I'm delighted. I'm joined by a very multi-talented guest uh, this time around. Uh, she's a filmmaker, journalist, writer, scientist, cosplayer, TTRPG performer, uh, always appearing on loads of shows, TTRPG shows, RP Geeks, Rusty Quill, Roll Together, Flintlocks, Fireballs, Ready Nature Tech. The list goes on. <laughs> You're very, very busy. Sharmini, how are you doing? <laughs> You picked me up too much. There's this whole long list I've got to live up to now. You threw scientist in there. I'm going to go like do some original research and start publishing papers now. Like this is high bar to me. Yeah, well, welcome, and it's so good to have you here. And um, just going to chat to you about D and D and all that oh, nerdy stuff. It. If that's, that's cool what with we you, like. yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's brilliant. Perfect. So I do. If it's all right with you, then I mean, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into D and D and TTRPGs. That'd be great. Yeah, so I keep like now. This is the year where um, I keep getting on my Facebook memories. Like five years ago, you were doing this, um, and it, and it's all this stuff from the, the very first, the very first game, which was um, I did a show, I did a panto that I'd written and directed. Um, after party, you know, lots of lots of drinking. Pub and the <laughs> pub was closing at like eleven or something. It was like really early, and we were like, oh, what should we do? Um, and um, the the prince in the panto said, "You should come back to my house and play D anD D." And I was like, "I'm I'm up for that, but like, I'm buzzed now. I don't want to like travel for like 45 minutes across London because that's how long it takes anyone to get anywhere yeah. in London, and then have to like get the energy back up again. I, like, I will agree to this if we start playing like at the bus stop that that we're going to move to to get to your house." <laughs> So okay. we're at the bus stop, he's got a dice rolling app. We quickly invent characters, which are just like, whoever you were playing in this panto, that's your character now. <laughs> that's who you are. Um, and we we started this game at, at the bus stop, and I've kind of been, yeah, that was that was five years ago, and I've been a little bit obsessed. And you're still waiting then. for the bus, even now. <laughs> <laughs> Best kind of D&D game yeah, goes yeah. on forever. While bus, for bus stop D&D sounds like the bus most D&D. amazing game I want to play. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I love that. I love that DM as well. He would always, um, everything was very interactive. Mm. Um, one point he gave us, like, when we had, like, puzzles, it was just like, oh, no, you, 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 you can't, like, hear each other. You're in, like, domes. So now you just have to, and he's like, play charades, because I can't think of a better way to put that. <laughs> so he's like, okay, we just have to play charades in the game. Mm. One point he had us drink shots. It was a, it was a, it, it was a, it was a drinking-oriented D&D game. <laughs> um, we, had to, we had to pick the shot, like, which one's the, the poison oh. and which one's the... The poison was actually oh, massive. Really cool. delicious. <laughs> it's getting offered to play D&D with Prince is a regular thing then, or is that just... Uh, yeah, do you want to get invited back to a guy's house? Come oh. back to my place and play D&D. They're all, they're all princes. <laughs> all lovely men I know are princes. Oh, and amazing. I love them all. <laughs> That is a, certainly a unique story. Uh, yeah, definitely. At a bus stop. I've never heard uh, anyone use a bus stop for such a <laughs> wonderful uh, activity. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. we, lo- we lost a player early on because we all we all um, walked, and she had to go to a different. Uh, oh, no. she, wasn't, she wasn't coming with us, and then her character just sort of tragically died. Oh, she had to get on the bus. Wait, you know what? She went, went somewhere else. <laughs> if you were having like oh. a long walk home, and there's a group of you, and you all had to separate off, right. off right. great way to kill it's your like, character. I tragic just... deaths, yeah, bit brutal. Yeah, you know, <laughs> tragic. You just you just have that one final hero who's yeah. basically like just Frodo level of traumatized. Yeah. Even <laughs> the DM yeah, who's yeah. down left, and it's just this one player yeah. like, did I win? <laughs> I hope I won. Everyone I love is dead. I haven't won yet. Even the narrator in my voice has gone now. Oh, <laughs> I don't know no. why I'm rolling dice anymore. We're doing a special <laughs> bus stop episode yeah. of Homebrew Habit. Definitely. Now. That's happen, right? Definitely. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Um, I mean, you play loads of great characters. Um, 
I'm assuming you don't have to take a trip down to the bus stop every time you want to make a character. But I mean, is Tenebris, the Paragol, uh, Ogden, uh, for and the list goes on again. Um, do you have like a process that you have um, bus stops aside when you're coming up with these sorts of characters? Is there something, or is it just? I don't know. Tell us how you do it. I do. It's funny that you mentioned some of those characters because my, my, my secret is that I do often um, come up with a name for the character by like Googling relevant words in other languages. Um, I don't know. Is that appropriation? I don't know. I've, I've stolen a lot of no, um, that's words fine. from other languages yeah. to, to make names. Um, Paragol was, was my favorite, actually, because I, I, love, I love it. Per- it's such a good name. So it's P-E-R-Y-G-L, Paragol. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is a great name. Um... And it's actually for our Welsh viewers who are always like, what, why, why are you called Perigal? Because it, it just means like danger. Be, in Welsh, <laughs> it's like on the signs, like danger, thin ice. Yeah. Don't go like, Welsh danger, is my go to. Yeah. Welsh like, is that's... my go to. Uh, I'm, I'm Welsh. Um, yeah. So I've, oh, I've got. I've got all of Paragol. I mean, we're rec- I'm recording this in Cardiff and uh, yeah, Perigal. I uh, see that around everywhere around here. And I just thought, Danger, that is such a cool name for a character. I love it. Were yeah, they, Welsh is great for it. Were they a badass character or were they just like no, a rally no, healing was, person? Danger, was, I'll heal my friends. <laughs> no, what it was is they were um, a bugbear who'd been raised by a bunch of slightly snooty elves. Um, sure. And this one like eccentric elf had like raised them and was like, yes, I will. I will teach this bugbear the ways of our culture and society. They were, they were, they were a bit racist. Um, and everyone else was like, ooh, that's dangerous. Don't like that. So Perigal was absolutely like, I'm lovely. Like, hello, I'm just <laughs> terribly nice. Please like me. <laughs> um, and so it was like this really tragic, like, for, for her, it was just like a reminder of how people saw her as a bugbear Aww. from the outside. And then she told, you know, she told the party and the party had exactly the same reaction. Like Toby's character was just like, oh, your name means danger. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. I wish my name was danger. And I was like, oh yeah, oh, that is quite cool. It's really cool. <laughs> I would also recommend uh, Krempog Hoyaden, which is duck pancakes. Um, you know, That's only amazing. useful if you go into an exclusively Welsh-speaking Chinese restaurant. Yeah. But still, uh, for D and D, I suppose that's another useful. That, that is a that niche sounds, place, isn't it? That, <laughs> yeah, so. a, that sounds like such a dwarf name. That'd be yeah, like go so it. good. Play as Crampog and Pancake, and you're onto a winner. That's there. amazing. I love uh, that- it. That's really cool. I mean, that's that's great. I, have you got any others? Any stories behind it, like uh, Ogden or uh, or any of the others that you play ten of as well? A Shakti um, means so Shakti in Hindi means like strength, and a Shakti mm. is like the opposite. So it's sort of like weakness or powerlessness, which was again like as just sort of a Shakti had the as a sorcerer these very like dangerous, horrible powers of fire and burning and pain um and the sort of burning hands and that kind of spell um yet it sort of societally was like just on the bottom rung of this like barely getting by oh. like you know worked some sort of low paying job and, and couldn't afford to rent anywhere actually in the city um so it was sort of a kind of a commentary on on the the contrast of the oh. having power and mm. not having power. It's all, it's all very deep, yeah. But, but, but Jaya, who also played in that campaign, just thought it was really funny because um, it just made him think of the kind of um, adverts you get on Indian TV for, like, um, children's, like, drinks and things where they're always just like, yes, this will give you Shakti strength, you know, make you strong. So that was his first association. Oh, nice. <laughs> So, no, that's so cool. I understand that you do a fair bit of cosplay or some cosplay at the very least. When you're, does that, do you do cosplay before I finally ask this question? Like, <laughs> like, I feel like such a fake because, like, I feel like I'm like, uh, do I? Yeah, I do. I just, I've just decided I did, and then I just said I did. But do I? I don't know. My, well, I have, do you dress like, up as your characters people. sometimes? Yeah. Right. So you do time, cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <okay. laughs> I hate to break it to you. I, I don't want to alarm you. <laughs> Is that what that is? Little okay, bit, yeah. Because yeah. I really like that, yeah. Um, so you do cosplay, we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Apparently, shit. Yeah. Damn. Okay, yeah. Am do I allowed to start on this podcast? Yeah, oh, yeah, go, yeah go for it. I Swear hope so. Away. We should have asked um, that in advance. That's fine. Um, so yeah, you do cosplay. 
Uh, when you're designing your character in your head, do you yeah. design them how they look with the intention of making it an easier person to cosplay? Because yeah. I would. 100%. 100%. <laughs> like, I am the worst. Like, everyone else is like, oh, I'm going to be like a cool um, tabaxi and I'm going to have like this amazing costume. And I'm like, okay, so I've got an orange top. <laughs> I guess I guess my character will wear orange. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's kind, yeah. kind of... Kind does of, your character have a beard? Yes, actually, he does have a beard. It looks remarkably like funny, this one. Yeah, funny you should say, yeah. <laughs> what a coincidence. I, I, I think that, imagine, I, you know, maybe my imagination is limited, but I do like... Um, you know, like when when you're like watching your like favorite actual play shows and that kind of thing, like imagining the yeah. actors as their characters a bit, and like mm-hmm. so you kind of feel like you know what you look, they look like a bit more, just like mm-hmm. in that in that sort of different, slightly different sort of body. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Yeah, with that, then I mean, I mean that's that's a part of D and D to enjoy. I'm sure, I know uh, I've got a lot of friends who enjoy that side of it, where they can really mm-hmm. embrace the character and dress up and do all that stuff. It's it, an it's, excuse. It's a great yeah, excuse. And, it's great, and I often, you know, uh, Paul has already said because uh, I play an owl in on on Hobu Havoc. I'm gonna find What's some an way. Owl in? Uh, it's uh, it's an owl. It's a humanoid <laughs> owl. Uh, it's in the from the Strixhaven. Um, oh, this is the new well, one. Oh. Yeah, and um, so got that because got to play an owl, and um, ah. there it is. Recommend and. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna have to like cover myself in tar and and <laughs> ruin a pillowcase or something, mm. and just cover myself mm. in feathers. But is there mm. a part of D and D? Um, you know, what do you mo- enjoy most about D and D? What part of it? Ah, oh, yeah, the, the the dressing up is like a bonus, but it's not it's not the core of it. And and you know, obviously, most people dress up, and you absolutely absolutely don't have to. Um, which is my favorite bit? I think. I think when I started out, I think my favourite bit, uh, it has sort of changed. So I really like the acting part of it. Mm. So I mentioned that I started playing D&D after a panto. Um, and it, I did do a lot of sort of like amdram, basically. Mm. So this, this would be community theatre, I think they, they would call it in America. Um, and D&D like definitely like scratches that itch role playing mm-hmm. of, of like doing the acting. I think when I started out, it, I was sort of enjoying the element of it that's like um, a sort of like an experience, sort of like a interactive experience where you, the, like the, the, the game master like throws a bunch of stuff at you and then you are living it and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to, you know, I'm feeling the surprise and the fear and like, you don't know what's going to happen. And you're just sort of reacting to it, mm-hmm. um, which is great fun. But as I've started doing performing, so doing stream shows and doing shows for other people, I'm just playing more. I've kind of realized like, oh, like, yeah, you could just be passively reacting to everything the the GM throws at you. Or you could be like telling your own story, whether that's to an audience of the other players or to, you know, mm-hmm. people who are watching if you're if you're sort of streaming or podcasting. Um and, and that's a whole that that's sort of like you know, that kind of storytelling, you know, I've always liked sort of, I, I wrote the panto, so, I, you know, I like, yeah. I like writing and, and, you know, coming up with stories. So that, then, then that's part of it as well. And then the performance is the challenge of performing your character's emotions in a sort of, that, in that balance between it's kind of like subtle enough that it's realistic, but also it's obvious enough, obvious enough that people know which beats you are hitting, yeah. what, what story you are telling with their journey their reactions and mm-hmm. you start sort of thinking like oh i want to have this conversation with this character because um you know i can see an element of their sort of arc that i, th- I think they're going in this place that i'm going to sort of contribute to either supporting or just like antagonizing antagonizing is more fun <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so you like for your own <clears throat> yeah i mean that's amazing so you like sowing the seeds for everyone else to enhance their stories as well uh, yeah i really like that i mm-hmm. mean that that's that's quite a a, a key thing in improv i um, we spoke to mm. eric last time from dm dm studios and he said uh, a, a similar thing you know um that um I, I did an improv course recently after having not done improv for ages and oh it was so good and there's it's there's so much there's absolutely so much crossover yeah. in terms of, yeah, like supporting people, like escalating a scene, like moving scenes forward, not getting sort of stuck in a rut with them, like doing rather than discussing. Um, yeah, it was, I found it really useful and really interesting. I That's admit, awesome. I have from a, a DM's perspective, because I'm a forever DM, love it, 
cool. Aww. Um, but I love improv and I love bringing my players' stories into it. And I fully encourage Cal, everyone in Homebrew Habit, if you've got a backstory that you want me to include, tell me and I will include it. I will move heaven and earth to make sure it gets included. But I will Very follow good. that up with a question. Um, have you ever done that with a DM? Like, do you have a memorable moment where you brought your backstory to them and they rolled with it and included it? And can you give us an example of like your favourite occasion where that's happened? Oh my gosh. I if you like say no, almost... like, and, like, none of your DMs have done this, and we've sort of gone back on what you've just said. But... <laughs> I feel like it's the opposite. <clears throat> no, I feel like... I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like, um, unless it's for a sort of like one shots, so just very mm. similar, sort of silly, silly things where where it doesn't matter so much. I think it is absolutely vital that I'm having a conversation with the with the um, the game master. Like I particularly like ca- characters and stories where your character sort of starts off in their world. Like mm. they have NPCs who they know. Yeah. Um, and therefore, you you have to <laughs> you have to discuss with, yes. with, the, with the GM like what what those relationships are and what all that is. Um, and absolutely, like for a for a longer campaign, um, you, you mean it is not necessarily that your um, particular like backstory plot elements have to come up, mm-hmm. but it it absolutely plays into who your character is now, mm-hmm. um, and therefore they kind of have to have to know about it. But yeah. I love I love the feeling that um, I'm having this with RP Geeks at the moment in that I was like, right, Ali, that's the GM for RP Geeks. I was like, here's, here's my idea for a backstory. Kind of worked it out together. And we're kind of going along and doing loads of plot things. And I just know it's like chasing me. I love it. Like it's, it's out there. It's coming for me. Like just. Oh. It's awesome. There's the other side of it, it as well, which is you can sort of throw something in mid campaign just on the cuff, just just improv style sort of backstory mm. stuff as well, or world building. I'll give a really stupid example. It happened the last episode we had on Homebrew Havoc, which was um, we decided that every um, Lord of the Rings film was oh. also canon yeah. in the in, in the uh, in the world, and That's that perfect. they all the actors were played by llama versions of themselves. So, oh wait, the fi- wait. Sorry, the, not you're not saying that the events of Lord of the Rings. No, were the films you can watch The Hobbit or right. something in okay. the in in the world, uh, the but they're all played llamas. by llamas. Um, yeah. like talking llamas or just normal llamas? Yeah, like, it's um, like llama people, like in llama people. the world, okay, you've got okay, humans okay. and then like yeah. animal hybrids. Of yeah, humans. yeah, okay, that's fair. So now that so that seed has been sown, and Paul has to come up with a race of llama people that need to be included now because and then you're they gonna, exist. Like, meet so- <laughs> then you're gonna like meet someone who's like the, like a celebrity and is like a oh. super famous llama film I mean, star. Sadly, that is a fantastic idea, and yes, I probably will. Yeah, but I, yeah. like. He said, we decided. I didn't decide this. No, I think no. I was away for five minutes and I came back. And between <laughs> the players and chat, they were like, yeah, Lama, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and I'm like, excuse seeds, me? <laughs> there's seeds of backstory to give to your DM, you know, when you're making a character. And there's also the seeds of chaos, which you sow by just improv on the fly yeah. and i, I can't to wait more. to be, yeah. meet llama christopher lee so i can't wait for that yeah sorry <laughs> sorry Shavani. no i was just gonna say like i need to do more like improving i think it's a, it's a sort of slightly different skill and a slightly yeah. different way of looking at it i really like like my character is fully formed and i know everything about mm. them before i started and now i'm like no i need to experiment more with with just like riffing off people, mm-hmm. especially if you've got like shared backstory. I love that. I love that kind of like, remember that time that you did this? Like, oh, well you did this and like, you haven't planned any of this and you're just kind of like coming up with it and yeah. that stuff. Well, I could give uh, a great example of that in a recent episode of Homebrew Havoc once again. Um, I pr- told the players beforehand, there is four lines of prep for this session. That is it. That is all I've done. The rest will be improv, ad lib, whatever. And I was especially focused at the start was Dodo, played by Callum, was interviewing people for a job position. And yeah. there was four people that turned up. One of them was basically Guy Fieri. He turned up. Another person but... snorted a shot of vodka, effectively, or he believed it was a shot of vodka. Another person was a farmhand who threatened to shoot a goose. Um, if it turned up in a pub. And all of it was just made up. And I made it all up on the fly. And the thing I love when I do that is 
I start a sentence and I have no idea where it's going or how it's going to end. Oh, man. And sometimes I get to the end of the sentence and go, that was a weird sentence to say. No. Yeah, we're oh. rolling with it. <laughs> You're brave. I can't, like, you can't commit to that much, that level <laughs> of, of complete improvisation. That's very, that's very brave yeah. and indeed chaotic. Let's flip it a bit then. I mean, <laughs> we mentioned like feeding the DM uh, or GM seeds for your character mm. plot that you flesh them out and and you enjoy that. Um, I noticed you you DM uh, was it the the Honey Heist Christmas special and you I were the you were the you were the uh, GM <laughs> for that. Honey Heist, yeah. yeah. Do you, did you um, do you prefer um, GMing like as a role play because you get to play like all sorts of different characters as a GM and doing all the NPCs and stuff, or do you prefer having that fleshed out one character that you can take on a journey? I like to GM one shots, and I love GMing for people who haven't played TTRPGs before and just being like, "Come, my pretties, yes." <laughs> um, but for campaigns, I prefer. I prefer playing. So I'm running one campaign, which is a book campaign. So it's the second campaign I've ever run, and it's the first one from a book. And yeah, it, I, I do enjoy it, but it does mostly just stress me out because I'm trying to make it perfect all the time. Like, I have really, like, I'm like, I, not, I need to be like, amazing somehow. And my brain can never actually be on top of all the things. It's, mm. um, so I'm running Waterdeep Dragon High, which already has about 300 NPCs that goddamn book and then every time i have a thought about something relating to my player's backstory or just a thought of a new idea for a plot i just throw it in there <laughs> and then now there are now there are more npcs and now there's more plot and we haven't got to the main plot yet because i keep in and and it's a disaster what am i doing so <laughs> maybe if i ever finish that and learn how to control my own story then i shall enjoy dming campaigns oh, but for now That's, that is cool yeah i mean um paul what are your thoughts on that um i'm kind of the complete opposite there i love dming longer campaigns but i hate dming one shots or uh, anything like that i love playing in one shots at this point i can only play in one shots because by the fourth session i get bored of my character and i want to play the uh, other 60 that i've created <laughs> which is great as a dm because i can play them all yeah, yeah. never mind it's good it's good have um, you got then tips and stuff? Um, I, I, I'm going to move it to that because you no. mentioned a couple of t- tips already. Did but... I? Yeah, I yeah. Any tips? I have no yeah, tips. Did like, somebody write them down? <laughs> no, there are no tips. But no um, regarding the role play inside of it, then mm. I mean, it, it, do you have like a, a big? Because yeah. you're really good at it. <laughs> so you must know how to do it a little bit. <laughs> you must know something about it. I've got doing. like tips for myself that I keep telling myself and then I don't always do. Right. Um so I, what I'm currently thinking is um Sharmani, you need to come up with like a really a really like strong, obvious character, like a cliche or an archetype, mm. so that from session one, having never played them before you can make it very clear to everyone immediately the baseline of who that character is. Um, because then you've got somewhere to go. Mm-hmm. You know, they can develop, they can have their arc, they can reveal things. Um, as opposed to, like, defaulting to, which, again, I did all the time when I started off playing myself, but slightly yeah. different. Yeah. Um, I, I think... Actually, I, I do really enjoy playing myself, but slightly different. So, <laughs> but like when you've got all that variety, yeah. you know, when you're if you're playing multiple games, um, you, you want the variation. And and the other thing is, so I, I've started a campaign recently in which I didn't I didn't come up with a voice beforehand, and I regret that now. <laughs> so from now on, I'm always going to have some kind of a voice. I want to do a voice, which is absolutely not necessary to play TTRPGs. So everyone no, going, yeah. oh, I can't do a voice. Like, this is just me. This is not at all necessary. But just doing something like they are going to speak fast or slow or high-pitched or slightly posh, like, just helps me distinguish when I'm them mm-hmm. and when I'm me, which helps me, again, like, perform their story to everyone else in, in like, the most obvious way possible. Mm. That's amazing. You mentioned like the, the pantos and and, and theatre yes. and things. Oh my god, I should just do panto characters, shouldn't I? That'd be ideal. <laughs> That's an idea. Um, yeah, just, but, so exaggerated. I mean, yeah. Do you think it helps with with the role playing side of things in 
when you do which the acting or the writing yeah the acting well both i mean do do they both help Uh, i'm assuming writing in terms of creating the characters but with role playing um when you're actually playing uh do you do you use your tricks of the trade from that side of things yeah i think so um but then i I just think there are really different kinds of games and there are different genres Mm -hmm. of games and the thing is that a lot of a lot of streamed games and a lot of games i play i play with actors i play with thesps and that's a totally different thing and i love it but i wouldn't want people who just aren't thespy to think well that's what D &D is that's how how you play you have to be really good at acting like that's Mm -hmm. like absolutely not what it's about it's just that obviously if you're going to be sort of making a podcast and performing and things it it Apologies it kind of to helps. interrupt. What's thespy? Thesp, thesp, oh, like a, a thespian. It's like I love how you just know. reset the word as if I'm going to understand it the second <laughs> time. Thank you. It long, Paul. I made it longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you no, know I'll go to Google. It's. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't actually know. I would say like someone theatrical, but like, yeah. What, yeah. What, what, what's the? Can we have a? So we have on yeah. RP Geeks. We have etymology corner. Which is where you look up the etymology of words that come um, up. So thespian is have, literally yeah. an actor or actress. Yep. But what's what's yes. the etymology? Where does the word come oh, from? The uh, balls well, and humorous. layers, you see. Fair a humorous theater. actor or humorous. actress. What's the origin, Paul? The origin. No, like you're asking a lot of Google, <laughs> aren't you? Really? I mean, Google's got all the answers. What are you talking about? Yeah, hold on, then. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. We're going to put from this podcast Greek... on hold just Thespis. while we Google Thespian. Oh, it's from the right. Greek. Go on. Thespis. Oh, God, is Thespis a person? <gasps> Thespis was a semi legend poet, uh, often called the father of Greek tragedy. The literal meaning of the name is inspired by the gods. I'm totally playing a character According... called Thespis. This yeah. Is <laughs> That's good, isn't it? That's awesome. A oh. Greek dramatist of the 6th century BC. Invented Educational tragedy. show. This yeah, is so now that's, an educational show. This is our whole RP Geeks thing, right? So that's etymology. Yeah. yeah. Usually my friend Simon does. Um, and, you know, you think you're, you're here for jinx, and then he just throws in some education at you. And you're like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm learning! <laughs> I love all those facts you do on there, the the little videos you put out with your your facts and and, and all the science mind blowing things that you put out there. I really, I really enjoy all that. I'd encourage everyone listening and watching this, uh, go and check out combo. Yeah, our our TikTok is particularly random because TikTok's where we put all the clips, and like the clips are either like a random section from our game, which is usually just something hilarious happening. Or just like a science fact. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I presume there are a lot of like really confused people who click follow because they found it like a D and D channel, and then then they just get like bombarded with facts. I facts know this science. isn't what I clicked on. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, what? Similarly, yeah. it could be used in like a, a lecture or something, and uh, they'll, your your video will just show up uh, yeah. on there. Well, let's ask the RP geeks about uh, <laughs> this, and then it's you like rolling dice and talking about that'd be awesome. Maybe yeah. that'll happen. Who knows? And I'm also. Go on, sorry. We're trying to bring it all together. That's that's like our secret aim. It's like, come, science nerds. Come, it's really nerds. <laughs> and it works. Us. It works really, really well. It's it's a good mesh. Um, and I've got I've got to ask you um because I saw recently um you did a live show at the Natural History oh my Museum. Gosh, Please tell me all about that oh and what was gosh. it like? I want to hear oh all gosh. of it. It was the natural history. It had the giant whale and everything. It was, <laughs> it was real. It was amazing. Like, like I don't know. Like, um, other other UK based peeps probably had the like school trip to the natural history museum in London. Um, and like, uh, yeah, I definitely came when I was, call it the dinosaur museum. Yeah, like that, to be honest, yeah, that's that's fun. I'm there yeah. for. <laughs> it's the dinosaurs. So that was absolutely amazing. Um, so um, Khalil, who's another like TTRPG. Nerd, like science nerd, uh, works at the Natural History Museum um, and was planning this evening event uh, called Lates, they do these Lates. Um, and it's, it was the first one back after like a long pandemic y break. Um, mm-hmm. And he just sort of DM'd me on Twitter, being like, Would you and the RP be at all interested? And I'm like, I guess, Yeah, I guess we'd probably be interested in that. Sure, why not? That's awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Would we? So did you do like a one shot or was it a continuation it of was, the story? Well, or? So. I got a bit over ambitious and decided I definitely needed to write a new game. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> which I'm actually, Ali's been on at me to actually like publish it, like write it up for other people. So me and Khalil basically came up with a, a game that would work with audience interaction. Because uh-huh. um, it was at this little theatre in the Natural History Museum. It's a lovely, I love it, it's called the David Attenborough Theatre and it's a lovely little mm-hmm. sort of circle audience um, that sort of fits about 100, 100 people and there was a sort of space in the middle where we got like the audience rolling a giant inflatable D6. I saw that, yeah. So good. <laughs> and we got them all to like come up with suggestions basically. So yeah, the, the, the game was designed um, to, to be sort of interactive. So I'm going to write it up so that you could play it either with or without it. Um, and it's, 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 is it scientific? It's sort of both very scientific, very not scientific. The premise mm. is you just keep creating animal hybrids. You just keep yelling, new genes, please. You get the mm. objective. Um, now, my I apologies, Shami, for interrupting. Your hmm. mic is cutting out slightly. Um, was, I, was I peaking or was I, you were just losing me? I think me? peaking slightly. If we can. Uh, I'm being too people. enthusiastic. Yes. I'm just going to, I'm just going to. I've, I've, I'm leaning forward and enthusiastically yelling about animals. That's why <laughs> you go for it, and do you know um, what? Love the enthusiasm. And, yeah, uh, it does. It shows on all all all, all the stuff you do. So uh, does yeah. this does this sound <laughs> does this sounds, sound any um, better now? Yeah, you're more sounds good. That's because I'm talking quietly as soon as yeah. I get excited to get it all stuff. Okay, I'll do what I can do. Um, yeah, you you basically just keep getting the genes of different animals combined, which is like not how, by the way. Well, that's not actually how genetic modification works at all. Um, but it does in our game. Excuse to talk about the different cool features that that different real life animals have. Yeah. Um, so we had like someone suggested mantis shrimp. Shrimp um, <laughs> have this uh, crazy. P- I think breaks the sound. Yeah. In aquariums. Um, which was very useful for our player uh, defending themselves against the, the hordes of, of enemies at that point. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to catch up on the. Um, I saw you were doing it, and uh, I have to catch up on the the stream. I, 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 you recorded it, yeah, and got it all. No, uh, the Natural History Museum one was a one-off. Oh, oh, I probably will do it on stream at some point. And actually, we're doing. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. I'm just gonna say anyway. There's a um Psycom conference uh in Belfast this summer called the the Big conference i think it is um and ali and bates are running mm-hmm. uh are going to be running games for attendees of the conference ah. which is about sort of learning about different kinds of science communication um but they will also be streamed and i'm going to write up yeah new genes please such that they can they can run it uh for those people and that will that will be uh streamed so that's 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 great i want to see how that uh yeah that game works out for it um but yeah look at that the the short clips i saw of the uh, one in the the museum um, looks like everyone had a blast. Uh, what was the experience like for you? I mean, was was it, it like? Was, it was great. I, I think the, the so the clip that we that that we posted on social is what one clip that that my friend Darcy took, even though we hadn't planned to film at all. So thank you, Darcy. Good work. <laughs> um, was just of this moment where the audience was rolling rolling one of the giant dice, right? And this is sort of this happens sort of several times during the end of the game. And watching it back, I just realized how amazing it is that, you you know, you have an audience full of people who I'm guessing most of whom wouldn't have played TTRPGs before. I'm not sure mm. um, out, of, out of the sort of random Natural History Museum Lates audience. Um, and the cheer that went up when that die mm. landed on the six, I was just like, oh, yeah, they're so into it. I remember like this is what like, yeah. TTRPGs do. You just get really into the number coming up it's so good to see it was yeah it was it was was a nice nice clip um and it's a good advert for you know um obviously you guys but for you know the emotion you get from the ttrpgs as well so yeah fantastic yeah i was very happy yeah Um, that's amazing have you got any other stuff coming up um ttrpg wise we're doing it we're doing a festival um which I'm jamming again. I I don't actually know what I'm jamming. Um, <laughs> so that's exciting. I, re- I really need to sort my life out. And <laughs> um, I, I, I work best under pressure, by which I mean I do things at the last minute. Uh, yeah, that's so, fair. Yeah. You, you, yeah. If you do things last minute, I've always found that I'm older and wiser and I've had more time to think about it. I have never <laughs> heard that justification. Yeah. Before. Really impressed. I've been oh, using I'm, it since I was about I'm really twelve. Impressed by so that. yeah, that's excellent. <laughs> that's that's clever. I like that. Yeah. 
Can I just it. ask, uh, apologies, uh, Kel, if I am interrupting, but the museum no. thing, because I, mm. I think that's fantastic. And I honestly didn't know that, that you'd done that, so that's wonderful. So cool. um, okay. could, what do you think the biggest difference is, aside from audience participation, between playing D&D or TTRPGs in front of a live audience versus streaming it or recording it for whatever reason? Interesting. Um, I think it, it sort of depends on the audience. I think it depends on, on, on the audience. And I think in that case, saying, okay, here is doesn't necessarily know what this is going to be or mm. what they're really in for or whether they'll enjoy it or not you know like it's not for everyone yeah like, they might want to take a punt and then <laughs> and then leave um so for me my priorities were um and this is sort of similar to my priorities when running played before yeah um and i mean maybe even for sort of streaming one shots as well which is keep it really short Mm. That Tristan Museum game was under an hour. Right. It was supposed to be under an hour. It was, it was slightly over an hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> really pacey, really high energy. Um, which is why I think like D and D Dungeons and Dragons Fifth yeah. Edition is a terrible system in which to do that. Um, <laughs> something like Honey Heist is brilliant. Like you want simplicity. You know, mm -hmm. it's not about the rules. Um, and first entry into TTRPGs, you're not there for the rules. Yeah. Um, you know, you just need to, to be able to get going and get into it. So, mm -hmm. so really simple, um, really, yeah, action heavy. Very nice. Fair enough. That's so, so cool. Is there, um, you mentioned Honey Heist, but I'm D&D, &D, of course. Um, are there other TTRPGs that you, um, uh, that you really enjoy playing or um, uh, you can really flex the role playing side of things that, uh, yeah, which ones do you like? I I haven't played a lot of things more than once. Mm. Um, so I've played a, a few things which I've always really enjoyed, but I'd say I've got them enough to like to know what exactly I like about them. I did the other day um, for the first time. There's more things that I, I'm not allowed to say. I, I guessed it on a on a podcast. I really want to say. Oh, no. This it, won't be oh, released I'm... for a while. We're talking about a month or two. So if you've got something tomorrow, yeah, it's probably safe. No, this, yeah. is like, this is like next year sometime. Oh, like hopefully we'll have it a bit quicker than that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this in two separate things. First off, I'm going to say um, go uh, listen to Realms of Peril and Glory pod. They're very cool. I'm just going to leave that as a random thing that I happen to have said. And then I'm going to say um, I played the other <laughs> <laughs> um, this game called Liminal, um, which is a super simple system, and it's um, very much a sort of setting inspired by Neverwhere and Rivers of London. Um, so it's about modern day UK, but there is a magical hidden world. You know, there's another there's another level of city um, that's the magical creatures. Um, mm. There's another game that is like this that I can't remember the name of I... as well. Are you a fan Never. of Rivers of London? I haven't read all of them. I've, I read the first few, but I can't quite I, remember them. Have you I heard? That whole vibe. Have you heard what's happening with Rivers of London? They're making a show. They, they are making a TTRPG of oh. Rivers of London. No way! The author is working with the name I can't remember, and later this year, and I know this oh my because my wife is a massive fan of Rivers of London and I'm starting to listen to the books now on the Audible oh. and she has said if they ever she said it if they ever release this I might try and DM so I moved heaven and earth to research it <laughs> and they are um, yeah Lolly um, so it's the first time she's going to DM and it's because she knows that world that. almost as much as the author himself so she's so excited for that um, do you like that but yeah, like that's absolutely. the good thing about TTRPGs, right? Is that like you can you can pick your IP mm -hmm. and just create stories within that world, and it doesn't even have the official the official um, you know game system yeah. of that particular like yeah. IP. But so many people, I think, get put off of like certainly my partner is like Dungeons and Dragons. He doesn't like fantasy. He doesn't like Lord of the Rings. I don't that's know fine. why. I, I'm sorry. Like Me I can't neither. explain Me it. Neither. Would he like Llama Lord of the Rings? <laughs> I don't think he would, because he just oh. he would just be like, I don't think he would, you know, appreciate 
that that's amazing, you know, because he doesn't <laughs> have the base level of understanding. <sighs> anyway, he was very unenthused about Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and actually, I'm, he's one of the people I'm running Waterdeep Dragon Heist for. And I just sold him on the fact that you're not crawling through a dungeon mm. fighting monsters. It's yeah. sort of like city based political intrigue. Yeah. Like there's all these systems and I like part of this whole like society. And he was like, oh. Well, okay. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> that one I could do. I always do feel yeah. like there's a TTRPG out there for everybody. If yes, exactly. D&D isn't it? Cool. Go Blades of the Dark. If Blades of the Dark isn't it? Cool. Go Lancer. There's. Uh, I say this. I've only ever played D&D, but that's because <laughs> I like D&D. I like fantasy. Um, but if you don't, awesome. There's something. As long as you want to be somebody else for a, you know a couple of hours a week, and who doesn't? Um, <laughs> there is always something for you. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be wrapping up very shortly as we approach uh, close. Um, but yeah, I just um, wanted to ask if you had anyone you wanted to shout out, anyone you wanted to thank for um, uh, in the TTRPG space. You can't throw that at me, Callum. Like, <laughs> oh my, this is like when you have, this is like you have to do like an Oscars acceptance speech, yeah. whatever it is, but you haven't prepared. <laughs> Look, it is it is safer to to not forget to like not say anything than to like not forget something you're supposed to have thanked for your life. Everyone knows what it's like when they're like trying to thank people. Yeah. This it's it's never like um, oh I've missed someone off the list because you don't like them. It, it it's hard. You you're in the middle. Of, I've just thrown this at you because yeah, I'm mean people. like that. So, I, I don't want to judge if any of us ever win an Oscar, but if we're nominated for one, we should probably prepare a speech. Yeah. There's only ever yeah. four nominations. Like we should be like that's a twenty five percent chance I'm gonna win. Like, I should probably prep. <laughs> that's why I'm saying the Oscar nominees. Ah. Have... <laughs> uh. I didn't even have. I didn't even have the. the well, the just mention then all the dungeon masters who have ever DM well, for you. No, I was gonna say, like, I think, <laughs> I think uh, you said you were a forever DM, Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think like GMing for people is is like so much work, um, and sort of energy, and often the people who have to organise like the doodle polls and everything as well, which is like another job, <laughs> a huge amount of effort. Um, so I, I, I think, yeah, all GMs everywhere deserve so much thanks, and especially all the people, yeah, definitely who GM'd for me and GM'd yeah. for me, and like, and therefore taught me how to play, and and sort of like brought me into the hobby, and and given me all these opportunities to play because it's mm. a huge amount of work and a huge commitment mm -hmm. uh, to to spend you know, three hours in a go with someone. Yeah, like, yeah I don't take that day. I'm very lucky. Yeah, that's amazing. And yes, thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. you've done is create an entire world I by yourself. You nodding and winking. I yeah. can see you there. Thank I just you, said that Paul. to make you look bad, Callum. I was just like, <laughs> oh, I just feel like people should appreciate you more. Yeah. Callum. <laughs> people don't need to, you know, prompt things like that to make me look bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, Shamini, that's 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 so cool. Um, yeah, where, where can people find you then? Um, where, if they want to know all about more stuff coming up <laughs> and um, all the stuff you do, TTRPG wise, he's, filmmaking, he's and all that goodness. Questions that I definitely know the answer to. Okay, I've got. You should follow me on Twitter. Twitter's great. My handle is at S Bundell. That's the letter S B U N D E W L. Um, same on Instagram. I think um, it's something different on TikTok. I think it's like charmony.b, which is unhelpful. So I don't post very much over there. But you should follow at RP Geeks D, &D um, because um, I run their TikTok account. Um, so I'm <laughs> mostly there. So if you ever hear, see a comment from, from me or like reply to you on TikTok. Just me being enthusiastic, and that's at RP Geeks D and D on TikTok and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. We have a website, RPGeeks.co.uk. Um, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it's awesome. Plenty, yeah. Paul, any final words before we sign off? Um, you will obviously find all those links in the video down below, assuming that I remember to put them there oh, by fire. next time uh, when I actually post this. But no, um, <laughs> I will uh, allow Callum to do the big sign off, but you can find both of us almost every Thursday evening playing Homebrew Havoc, and we have just ended on quite a heavy cliffhanger. 
Somebody's dad is in prison, and we don't know why. Find out, um... Actually, you might know why by now. Yeah, Who knows? Say, isn't it's, this coming out yeah. in two weeks, and then you'll, they'll already know? Two weeks is generous. We're talking about a month, I think. Um... <laughs> <laughs> go go see her brew havoc. We're probably on episode like fifty by now. It's a cosplay episode, <laughs> um, but I'm definitely check it out. That was a preview for something that happened in episode <laughs> yeah. five. Yeah. Uh, so rewind. Go all the way yeah. back. Check it out, either. Just about grasping how time works. Yeah. So. Um, you can find me all the time um, at Amazon D20 on Twitter. That's pretty much the only place I live. And if you go there, you will find the Discord for Homebrew Havoc and other Ampersand production, uh, productions. Because that's where I put everything. Yeah, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at C Lee D N D. Um, I might be officially changing my name to Clee, as Sorry. everyone says uh, that I should, and it's Pretty a lot confusing. easier. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I am Cal. This is <laughs> Cal's questions, uh, soon to be rebranded as Clee's questions. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, thank you everyone for um, uh, listening, watching wherever you're watching or listening to this. Um, yeah, that was Cal's questions in association with Ampersand Productions, and that just leaves me to say thank you so much for joining us, Sharmini Bundell. Amazing, thank you very, very much. It's been great, it's lovely to see your lovely face.